Have you ever heard of the fake Prince of Montenegro? Our story today takes us to the bustling streets of New York City in the 1920s. Now, imagine an ordinary man, a grocer by the name of Mihailo Ljubibratic, or as he preferred, Michel First Michel was no ordinary grocer though, with an air of charisma that was hard to ignore and a knack for spinning captivating tales, he stepped onto the vibrant scene of New York society claiming an identity that was far from the truth. He professed to be an exiled prince from Montenegro, a man of nobility and grandeur, displaced from his homeland due to political unrest. With each word, each tale, each claim, he painted a vivid image of a royal life lost, of wealth and nobility that was unjustly stripped away. His exotic background and tales of lost wealth and nobility quickly made him the toast of the town. The prince, as he was known, spun tales of grandeur about his homeland and his noble lineage. He painted a picture of Montenegro as a land of epic battles and royal intrigue, a place where he, as a prince, had been wronged and was now in exile. His narrative was so compelling that it caught the attention of the New York press, who were always on the hunt for a good story. This further cemented his status among the city's elite, as his tales were printed and spread far and wide. But why was his story so readily accepted? Well, the social context of the 1920s played a significant role. It was a time of great change, an era where the lines between old money and new were blurring, and society was in a state of flux. The wealthy were looking for something exciting, something that would offer an escape from the mundane. Enter Michel I, with his exotic background and tales of lost wealth and nobility. This former grocer turned prince had a charisma that was infectious. He knew how to play to his audience, how to tell them exactly what they wanted to hear. He was a breath of fresh air in a society that was stifling under the weight of its own expectations. His story, his persona, it was all a perfect fit for a society in search of something different, something exciting. And so, Michel I, the Prince of Montenegro, continued to live a life of luxury. He was invited to the most prestigious events, dined at the finest restaurants, and stayed in the most opulent hotels. All of this funded by the generous donations of his new friends, who were more than willing to assist a man they saw as a noble cause. His tale of woe and injustice appealed to the sympathies and vanities of the wealthy, who saw in him a noble cause to champion. However, as with all tales of deceit, the truth began to unravel. The whispers of doubt began to echo louder. Skeptics, those not entirely swept up in the whirlwind of Michel's charisma, started raising eyebrows. They questioned the authenticity of his claims, the legitimacy of his royal lineage. As the doubts grew, so did the investigations. Soon, the illusion began to crumble. Investigators, relentless in their pursuit of the truth, dug deep into Michel's past. They unearthed a trail of deception that spanned continents, a web of lies spun with audacious skill. Michel Erst, the supposed Prince of Montenegro, was no royalty. He was Mihailo Ljubibratic, a man who had dared to dream, yes, but a dream built on deceit, and then the grand facade fell apart. The charm and elegance of Michel I, the would-be prince, dissolved into the reality of Mihailo Ljubibratic, the con artist. The grand illusionist was unmasked, leaving the city's elite in disbelief. The elite of New York City, embarrassed and humiliated, were left to ponder how they could have been so thoroughly deceived. The revelation sent shockwaves through high society, leaving an indelible mark on its collective psyche. Trust was shattered, friendships were strained, and the facade of infallibility among the city's elite crumbled. Yet, in the aftermath of the scandal, there was a silver lining. Society learned a valuable lesson about the dangers of blind faith and the importance of due diligence. The allure of an enchanting story, no matter how captivating, should never overshadow the need for truth. This tale of deception also sheds light on a universal human trait, our yearning for a connection to something larger than ourselves. It's this desire that often leads us to believe in narratives that promise grandeur and nobility, even when they defy logic. The story of the fake Prince of Montenegro is a fascinating glimpse into human nature and a society willing to believe in fairy tales even when reality suggests otherwise.